Oh, hey, what's up? Welcome to Janky Drift HQ, AKA the third bedroom in this tiny house we rent. Now I got some feedback based on the last video that maybe it, things weren't as exciting as they could be, so. But I digress. Last video, I had suggested buying a sim racing rig instead of a real drift car if you were interested in getting into drifting for the first time. The amount that sim translates to real life is just ridiculous and has allowed me to do things like this. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a follow-up video where basically I give people some tips and tricks on how to get started on sim drifting for the first time, as I know it can be a really steep learning curve and extremely frustrating. I broke it out into a number of simple steps to build up to your first real actual drifts. I think the biggest thing people struggle with when going into sim for the first time is perception of speed. So one of the things that I recommend starting out, honestly, is just doing some races, just driving around the track, getting to the point where you feel like you have a good sense of speed before you're going into a turn, because otherwise you're gonna do things like this. And you're gonna keep doing things like this. The second common mistake is too much or too little wheel input. The first example here is not letting the car properly counter steer itself and having a death grip on the steering wheel. Well, example two is essentially trying to overcompensate too much, which generally winds up spinning in the opposite direction. The next common mistake is just far too much throttle. Drifting is a lot more delicate balance than I think a lot of people realize. I mean, if you're just stomping on the gas, you're gonna spin out. So for this lesson, I'm focusing on the BMW E92 Drift. I'm also focusing this lesson entirely on the base Assetto Corsa Drift track, which honestly, there are so many different lines you could take on this track that you could spend you know, hundreds of hours kind of perfecting your technique here. However, we'll be spending most of this lesson in this middle circular portion of the track, which is probably the best spot for beginners to start to learn car control. But the goal here is to get to the point where you can drift the whole top and the whole bottom, and link that with a manji in between. And for those who are unfamiliar with a manji, it's essentially that little quick back and forth transition before I go back into a longer drift. Step one is your first power slides. And I know this is not gonna be glamorous, it's not gonna be exciting, but the idea is just to get you used to sliding the car and bringing it back, sliding the car, bringing it back. So here you wanna get the second gear going into a corner, turn in, gas it, let the steering wheel slide through your hands, catch it, and bring it back to center. So we'll say gas, release, catch, bring back to center. Gas, release, catch, bring back to center. Gas, release, catch, bring back to center. And then we're gonna add to the technique by getting back on the gas. So gas, release, catch, gas. Gas, release, catch, gas. Gas, release, catch, gas. You'll probably find with this technique that you're understeering a lot, pushing towards the outside of the turn. So this next step is focused on building a full drift around a turn. And this step is called getting some donuts. So essentially find this little red dot towards the lower half of the track, get yourself in first gear, and start to get used to drifting a circle around it. If you watch my hands here, I'm doing little nudges towards the circle, which helps maintain angle and extend the drift. Once you get comfortable there, you move to this other part of the track where it's a more oblong circle, get yourself into second gear, and start focusing on the same thing. Just give it little nudges towards the center when you feel like the drift is starting to straighten out. And this brings us to our next step, which combines the little BS power slides you learned earlier, as well as the donuts, to get us to the point where we can do a full drift around a single corner. So same technique as earlier with gas, release, catch, and so on, but now you're gonna nudge the steering wheel into the turn to help extend the drift around the full corner. See what I'm doing, just nudge, 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 and again nudge, nudge, and that gets us around the full turn. And you wanna keep going until you get to the point where you can drift around the full top end and the full bottom end of the circle. I wanna take a moment to emphasize that drifting is very much a balancing act. You ideally wanna modulate the throttle. Similarly, it's important to trust the car to counter steer itself. So I put together a quick clip, which is gonna seem like a flex, but I don't at all mean it that way but it's me driving one-handed just to show essentially how little force I'm putting into the steering end. Again, I'm doing nudges where needed to get through turns, but for the most part, the car is almost 100% <laughs> counter-steering itself. It's just getting to the point where you can time the catches correctly to keep the car in a drift. I may be putting a little bit of friction on the steering wheel in some of these instances to prevent from counter-steering too fast, but I'm very much avoiding fighting the car or trying to force the wheel in one direction or another. There are a number of different ways that you can initiate a drift, uh, the more common ways being handbrake or dropping the clutch. And you can definitely use any of these techniques paired with what I had shown earlier. I just didn't want to add any extra difficulty up front or extra steps where they weren't needed. But with the handbrake, it's as simple as clutch, handbrake, get back on the gas, turn in. 
Again, clutch, handbrake, get back on the gas, turning in. Similarly with dropping the clutch, just pop the clutch, get on the gas, nudge in. I think you'll most often find the folks do a little feint or a little weight transfer with this one. So if you're going into a left turn, nudge the wheel out to the right, turn in, pop the clutch, gas, turn in. Transitions can be a little bit of a pain to learn. When you're coming out of a drift and then going the opposite direction, you really need to account for some stronger forces that are otherwise gonna spin you out, throw you off the track. But similar to what I've shown for other techniques, I mean, the general idea is easy. Say I'm coming out of this right-hand drift, I'm gonna nudge left, nudge right, and then I'm back in my drift. Same again, nudge left, nudge right, and I'm back in my drift. Practice this about a million and a half times and eventually you'll get it. And don't stick to this one car or this one track or this one section on the track. Definitely test other configurations out as it will make you a better all around drifter because every car handles a little bit different. Uh, every track surface handles a little bit different. You know, there are different types of turns on various tracks. Nonetheless, I hope this was helpful. Feel free to post any questions in the comments. I'll be happy to respond. Like anything else, it just takes time. It's gonna get really frustrating, but it'll be really fun in the end, I promise. Thank you.